Okay, that should be me live now. Uh, sorry to anyone who was tuning in to watch the stream. Um, I was doing a test stream earlier and accidentally forgot to switch back to my actual Twitch settings. So all this time I have been streaming to a test stream. Go me! Okay, so um, hello, I guess Falcha Hiladunya. Hello and welcome everyone. I am Gaia Vantana. Uh, some of you may know me as Trihan. And um, I am going to be streaming A Rise of the Third Power by Stegosoft Games. Um, this is a game I beta tested, so it won't be a blind playthrough. Um, and also, just uh, in case anybody's followed me here from YouTube, um, I know a couple of people who followed me recently were watching my playthrough of Chronicles of Sifanubra. Um, I will not be doing that anymore, reason being the mechanic that um, gave you extra stuff for finding all the chests. Um, I am an obsessive completionist, and that wasn't really fun to watch, I didn't think. So I'm just going to play that on my own time. So without further ado, let me get this live. I uh, don't think I've got any viewers yet, but I'm just going to dive right into it and hopefully uh, people will join as and when they feel the inclination. Just two seconds. Uh, I'm a bit rusty at this, so um, rusty at this, so um, there may be some teething issues as I remember what the hell I'm doing with all this stuff. Right. Okay. Ah, I have a viewer. Hello, viewer. Um, just before I go, actually, if I do have somebody watching, can you just let me know how my voice volume is in comparison to the game audio? just want to make sure that it doesn't drown me out or I don't drown it out, etc, etc. Okay, so we're going to a new game. Uh, let's go for expert, because why not? Stegosoft Games presents. A game by Evelyn Hall and Joey Peters. Um, this has got to be just about the stupidest plan anyone has ever come up with. Is my memory failing me, or was kidnapping the princess not your idea? That doesn't mean I don't think it's stupid. I don't know how you ever got Reyna to go along with this. Sounds like something you got out of a fairy tale. <laughs> yeah, but if this were a fairy tale, we'd be the bad guys. Maybe we are. Dun dun dun! I do love the little animations in this intro bit. It's the way he kind of bends down and then kind of yeets her up to the roof. Hello, generic palace guards. So sneaky. Evening, gentlemen. What the? This is a restricted area, civilian. I don't know who the hell you are or how you got here, but you're under arrest. It's just occurred to me that um, having the camera down the bottom left is going to make seeing the text slightly difficult. So let me just move that up to the top left. There we go. Sorry about that. Drop your pistol. No. Sorry mate, I like this pistol. Thwack. It's knocking a couple of guards dying them up. It's regular Tuesday. Don't rough them up too badly, kid. Our reputation's bad enough as is. Yeah, yeah, I know the drill. Hey, uh, since we're probably not going to make it out of this one, I just wanted to say... Thanks for doing this. Oh my god, do not get sentimental on me right now, kid. 
If you really know how to suck all the fun out of dying, Rowan. So our current protagonists are Rowan and Corina, or Karina. I'm pretty sure Avalon pronounced it as Karina, so I'm going to go with that. Kind of like how the intro gets going with the action without any actual like battles or anything. Castle Evanhart, Kingdom of Cerinthia. Fifteen years have passed since the guns of the Great War at last fell silent. The conflict rocked the world, leaving half a generation of men and women lying dead on the battlefield. In time, Dmitry Noriskov, a hero to the defeated kingdom of Arcadia, rose from the ashes. He saw his king as a coward for surrendering, and a traitor for submitting to the Treaty of Evanhard. So did his people. They supported Noriskov when he overthrew the king. They supported him as he reclaimed the lands that had been taken from them, and they supported him as he raised an army. Noriskov had theorised that the nations of the world were still too wearied by the Great War to oppose him. Thus far, his gambit has proven successful. The Arcadian Empire shows no signs of curbing its aggression. It is feared by many that a reprise of the Great War, that at one time could have been prevented, is now all but inevitable. But there are those that believe it can yet be stopped. Oh hey BG! How you doing mate? Chapter 1 from the Jaws of Defeat. Yeah, is the game sound um, okay in comparison to my voice, BG? Just want to make sure I've got the levels okay. Corina whispering. Okay, so why are we doing this again? Kidnapping the princess was your goddamn idea, and you don't even know why we're doing it. Rena said we had to stop the wedding, and she wanted to talk with the princess. I don't know, kidnapping her just made sense. Well, you can never explain it to you if we make it out of this alive, then. <laughs> Rowan is not happy. If I die without ever knowing, I'm going to be pissed. I, I think the, the music here kind of gives me a slight Pirates of the Caribbean vibes, don't know about you. Looks like two soldiers, one officer, two unarmed nobles. Any chance we can sneak past the nobles and flank the guards? Nope, we're going in hot. Well, here goes nothing. <laughs> Ryan just nonchalantly taking a drink before he goes into battle. What are you doing? Just nothing, just having a drink. Rowan! Hey, we're about to die. Can you cut me a little slack? I think better drunk anyway. Yep, that is exactly what Rowan is doing, BG, getting drunk. That better be true. Tutorial Combat Energy, or MP, for ability use is obtained in a variety of ways. For example, Karina regains energy quickly each turn in battle, whereas Rowan's is earned by taking damage or using his slash ability. After combat, all party members regenerate 50% of their MP. Okay. Hell, well we're outnumbered and I'm out of sleeping powder. Can you handle it, kid? No sweat, my pack's full of this stuff. Okay, good. I'll taunt the one in the cape, you put the mage to sleep, and we'll focus down the last one. I kind of like how the tutorial battle is kind of telling you what to do in battle as well, without actually telling you. Kind of giving you hints in dialogue, rather than being like an out-of-character thing. I think it's a really nice touch. Sounds good to me. Let me out. Battle orders attack. So if we go to status and have a look at this thing, battle orders attack, it increases damage. Which on expert we really don't want because there's quite a tight window here for uh, making sure we do things properly. 
So, let's do what Rowan said. You're going to use Sleeping Powder on the Marge. Mage is now asleep. Brown gets shot at. Brown wants to taunt the Castle Guard Captain. <laughs> Love how the taunt thing is basically Rowan just like giving them the finger and then they're like, why you little I oughta? Corrin is going to quick slice the Castle Guard. Round pistol the Castle Guard. So battle orders speed increases speed. Simple as. So with Corona or Karina even, I'm gonna kill this castle guard, get him out of the way. Ruin going to and I'm gonna slash the mage. Inflicts a bleed. to watch Rowan's HP. Slice the mage. Rowan is going to booze. Yeah, I'm playing on Expert BG, so the damage is quite high. I do think it's quite well balanced for each difficulty, though. Having played on like all of them. This should be fairly straightforward at this point since I've only got one animal left. Nothing to it. Victory! We get three ducats, which is the uh, currency of Rise of the Third Power, and 16 XPs. Um, I guess I started on 1 XP, and uh, I need 66 to level. I also get a lesser heal. Um, so leveling in Rise of the Third Power is quite interesting compared to other RPGs because there aren't individual levels for the characters. Everybody levels up together, and then you get talent points that you can spend on whoever you want that unlock different abilities and uh, stat boosts for them. Which I think is kind of cool. It means that you're not constantly like chasing up... Um, character levels for people that you weren't using in the party. Alright, those guys shouldn't wake up for a few hours at least. What's next in this ridiculous plan? Hey, attitude, have another drink. Oh, Baconius Dragon, hey, uh, Bacon, uh, use your limit break. Don't have one. At least not yet. Now you're talking. Miss Reyna knows the castle pretty well. Princess Ariel's room is on the second floor, below this one. Take out the guards, find Ariel, and use the sleeping powder on her, then you get us out of the city. Rowan, are you even listening to me? Nope, he's just doing his uh, thing, having a drink, living his best life. Uh, Bacon says, figured I'd drop in and support you. I appreciate that, man. Thank you very much. For the love of... Would you give it a rest already? Mmm, yeah, that's the good stuff. And you're the one that told me to drink. Yeah, a sip. Fine! And I was listening. Princess, downstairs, sleeping powder. I got it. Let's go. Well, that didn't make you any less grumpy at all. Rena's sleeping powder should do the trick. It'll be a while before this guy wakes up. Some uh, lovely sleeping nobles there as well. Nice, right, buy me a treasure. Gems. A handful of tiny gems, cut and polished. Low value. Sell these. I like that the um, the items that you like only exist to be sold for money, like tell you in the description that you can sell them. I find that quite often in RPGs, I'll get an item and I'm not really sure if like it's going to have later use or not, so I'm reticent to sell it. And then it just turns out that it's pretty useless. And I sell it anyway. 
and also, I can pet the cat. Like that, I would, I'm already sold on this game just for the fact that I can pet a cat. I, I could just do that for the entire stream, and I would be quite happy. Although it might not be that fun to watch. Good, a supply of potions. We took a beating that last fight. Better make sure we're healed up before the next. Yeah, try not to forget. It's not like our wounds will just heal up on their own. And I also got a revive, which revives an unconscious character. So I'm gonna, yep, I think I'm gonna do a little bit of healing here. Uh, Rowan should be okay for the moment. Uh, Beejolisp says, yeah, what game has your wounds heal after all battles? Yes, indeed. I've never seen a game do that, ever. Nope, not me. You know what? No, I'm going to use the last heal on Rowan. Just have visions of me um, being like, yeah, I'll be fine, and then just getting raffle stomped. The other cool thing about this game is um, each of your save games has a slot, and then each of your saves in that slot is separate. So like if I go to load a game, I choose like which of my playthroughs I want to load. And then it has all the saves for that playthrough. So I don't have to like remember which save file went with which play, which I think is a really nice touch as well. There's a lot of quality of life stuff in this game that I absolutely love. Whoa there. Good morning and welcome to Castle Avonheart, home of House Lydiata, ruling family of Cerinthia. Hope you don't take offence to my saying so, but you don't exactly strike me as guests of the royal wedding. Not sure how you got in here, but I'm afraid you'll have to come with me. I don't think so, mate. Combat! So the nice orange swirl there means that I am in combat with an elite enemy, which are more difficult than normal enemies, funnily enough. Whoa, watch out, Rowan. That one's elite. Elite? What? How? This looks like another random jackass I haven't shot yet to me. Okay, well, just trust me. Elite enemies are tough, and they drop special loot too. Looks like her armor is tough. I can deal with that by sundering it. I can use Eviscerate to whittle her down too. So she puts her defense up, and I'm just going to be like, yeah, nah. Rowan gonna taunt. Okay, so what she's done there is um, charged up a move. Uh, so I am going to Sleeping Powder her. And nuts to that. You love me some interruption. She is still taunted, that's fine. So Rowan's um, Slash applies a bleed effect, and if you know Quick Slice for Karina deals 50% more damage to bleeding targets, there's a bit of a kind of synergy between them there. Uh, gonna have to take this heroic strike because I cannot unfortunately uh, interrupt her again. I'm going to eviscerate to put another bleed on her. And Rowan's just gonna reapply taunt. Cause yeah, Corina getting hit with that hurts. Look at this less. One turn remaining on pistol. So I do like the battle theme, but um, wait till you hear the boss theme. I absolutely love it. So good. Victory! I get one Ducat and 14 experience. Yay me.
I bet if we're quiet, we can sneak up on that other patrol. They'll probably come back this way, though. If we jump them from behind, we'll get the first strike in battle. Good call. Hey, you're pretty good at this whole murdering people from behind thing. Stop it, you're gonna make me blush. So a fairly simple concept here, the red cones are their vision from their feet <laughs> and um, you want to hit them from behind so that you get first strike. Like that. The little exclamation marks in the sound effect just gives me proper Metal Gear Solid vibes. So Green is going to sleep the mage. One's gonna taunt the knight, I think. And he's the tank. I'm to taunt the guy that deals the damage. He defenses up. We don't care about him right now. That takes out guard. Definitely want to do this with Rowan. The boost does have a bit of a trade off. Um, unfortunately, it um, lowers Rowan's defense. He's a very interesting tanky character. Grievously insulting that guy's mother. Sunder off your defense down. Go and do his slash. Bring an eviscerate. It's cool as well that the characters don't have like a regular attack like you get in some RPGs, so there's no like just attack command. They do have skills that don't cost any resources, but they all kind of have additional effects as well, which I think is cool. No, I'm going to boost here. I'm going to put that guy to sleep. And then take a couple of turns just to heal Rowan up without having to use a healing item. And he died from the bleed anyway, so I didn't even have to attack him. And victory gets me three ducats and 15 experience and a bronze key. I'm curious. And I need 20 more XP to level up. And I've got seven of another thing. Oh, I think that's like my cumulative total of ducats after adding them on the ones that I got for winning. Happy days. Rowan just taking another drink. Okay, we'll let all the guard these guards sleep off our sleeping powder in there. If anybody finds them, they'll see my empty flask and just think they're drunk. And they really won't remember anything. Somebody used it on me once. Woke up with a hell of a hangover and my memory was pretty much gone. It should buy us enough time to grab the princess and get the hell out of here though. Now let's go see what your bronze key unlocks. By the way, um, I was going to give all the characters funny voices because I always imagined Rowan sounding like Jack Sparrow from Pirates of the Caribbean. But then I started reading out his first line and forgot to do that. And then after that, it felt like it would be silly to change his voice. So he sounds like me, as does everyone else now. And you're sure it wasn't just a regular hangover? Yes, damn it. Probably. Anyway, we've got a bronze key now. Let's see what we can do with it. Just imagine these lanes being read by Jack Sparrow now, so I don't know. see what this bronze key unlocks. That was a terrible Jack Sparrow impersonation, and I will never do it again. I am going to pet the cat again, though. 
Are you kidding? <laughs> yeah, so Rise of the Th Third Power's dungeons work on a three key system where basically all of the paths that you can't go down are locked by either a bronze, silver, or gold key, and the puzzles generally involve finding that key and then using it to unlock doors. Couldn't be simpler. Looks like this is the barracks. Most of the guards are probably sleeping. Let me look. There are a couple guards, but this place is full of giant toads. Keep your voice down. Wait, toads? Yes, the barracks is crawling with them. Don't let them touch me. As we all know, giant toads are a very real problem. I can barely move an inch without just tripping over toads all the time. Giant toad cleanup detail leader. Sir! Giant toad cleanup detail reporting in! The giant threat has been beaten back. Their numbers have dwindled and now only three toad squads remain, marshalling their forces in the prison below. Why do you have to be so serious about everything? Sir! Practicing for the real thing, sir! I sound like a real soldier, huh? Shut up! Both of you! What are you doing back here for if there's still toads down in the prison? Bathroom break, sir! Ugh. You! You're the exterminators, right? Uh... Yes? Finally! By the storms of Aranathan, I am freaking out over here! Name Stein, Captain of the Guard here at Avenar. The rest of the toads are downstairs in the prison. Clear them out and we'll pay your fee. But I mean every last one, hear me? Well, you were talking in all caps, Stein, so I couldn't help but hear. I want this barracks in pristine condition well before the wedding ceremony begins. Sure thing, mate. See, he calls people mate. How can he not shout inside like Jack Sparrow? Uh, Rowan, a word? Why are we exterminators now? It's a good enough cover. Clearing out these giant toads shouldn't take too long. Probably. If you let any of them touch me, it'll be your ass, Rowan. Okay, so, yeah, we'll have this place toad-free before you know it. See that you do. Quest added, exterminators. And sure enough, if we go to our quest log, exterminators has been added as a side quest. It's cool as well that you can like go between the main quests and also like the main story details. So it's kind of you can swap between what you need to do and why you need to do it. And there's kind of that separation there if you just want to immediately see what your objective is without all of the uh, the storyline fluff, as it were. And there is a doggo, so I'm going to pet the doggo. And I know what you're thinking, but there is not, in fact, at least yet, an achievement for petting all of the animals in the game. And I have told both Evelyn and Joey that this is a crime against humanity, and they need to get that sorted immediately and add an achievement for petting all the animals. So the thing with the frogs is um, the non-humanoid enemies, I think it's just non-humanoids, you cannot sneak attack them. Um, basically because they're aware of you at all times, or whatever I've looked at. Um, basically they cannot be snuck up upon. Right. Uh, gonna put the deadly frog to sleep. Where'd a frog even get a sword from anyway? Oh, I cannot one-shot the healer. Oh, well, pistol. He's going to heal that guy, that's fine. He's going to put his defense up, that's fine, I'm not attacking him right now. Take out the healer with quick slice. Uh, taunt the deadly dude. Yeah, that's 
Carta. Eviscerate him. Rowan can slash him. Karina's gonna do her a heal. Yeah, you're generally gonna want to let Rowan take the majority of the hits at this point in the game, because Karina is very fragile. But Rowan's got like double over double her HP, so it just makes sense really. armor. Just a little. So what are you thinking of it so far, BD? The Conius Dragon says, nah, have the Squishies tank, always the best plan. <laughs> yeah, I mean, speaking as a former uh, Priest player in WoW, I can definitely attest to the fact that whenever I tanked, it ended in complete success every time. Uh, Beagleist seems interesting. I've got a huge backlog, though, so probably won't get it right away. Yeah, that's fair, man. Um, I, When I first played through this on the beta test, I finished it in about 32 hours. And that's with me having been trying to break the game and obsessively going everywhere, doing everything I could find, talking to people multiple times because I had to like track all the typos and everything. So I'd say like conservatively it'll probably take about 28, 27, 28 hours or so to play through. I just bought Imposter Factory today, my payday gift. Imposter Factory? What's that? I've not heard of that one. Today what I am waiting on is the Final Fantasy VI Pixel Remaster uh, coming out on the 23rd, I think. I'll probably be picking that up. Same dev as To The Moon. Okay, yeah, I might pick that up then, because To The Moon was quality. Loved it. Uh, right, what's Rowan doing? Is he taunting? Yes. You up your defense, and I say, yeah, nah, you're not doing that. Uh, Baconius Dragon, I need to find time to run back onto Valheim with you. You definitely do, mate. Um, sorry I've not been on that much lately. Um, I have been doing coding commissions and helping people with RPG Maker stuff and updating my help topics on the forums, getting my Patreon back up and running. Um, I had to like go shopping for food at some point. <laughs> uh, life is very, very busy right now. Um, what else have I been doing? Oh, I've been playing Vampire Survivors as well. That's pretty good. Uh, Beagle so I'm playing last stream now. That's how far back my backlog goes. Yeah, last stream came back on, came out a while ago. Uh, Baconius, I've been working. I'm doing work for NASCAR this weekend. Oh, that's cool, man. Hope that all uh, works out good for you. Brian's going to booze. Brian's going to salute the powder that guy. Brian's going to booze. And when you end up with one enemy left, booze is just uh, free healing if you've got uh, sleeping powder on cooldown. Three Ducats, 17 experience. Three more and I level up. I think that's the other cool thing about this game is that all of the encounters are on the map. You know exactly how much like experience, or the, from a developer's perspective, you always kind of know how much experience is available to the player at any given time. You can respawn the encounters by sleeping in an inn, but for the most part, it's more controllable than having random encounters where you never know like how many encounters a player is going to have done before a boss, which makes balancing a bit more of a nightmare for me, from my perspective. At least I would say so. Right, before that, we can go get this treasure. Got me some more lesser heals. Also got an elite frog. Let's see, Beagle says, I have some respawn and some not myself. 
I have some respawn and some not myself. Ah, okay, yeah, I get you. Piconius, I'm hungry. Ship me some wild Haggai to hunt. Uh, unfortunately, with it being uh, quite snowy here right now, the Haggai have gone into hibernation. Um, but I can send you a Highland cow um, if you don't mind preparing your own food. Uh, right, what am I going to do here? I'm going to sleep the elite deadly frog. Damn, out of season, I'll accept the ginger bat. Alright then, man, I will send you some of that. Piss. I really should taunt everyone, but I want to get that healer out of the way. Taunt everyone for two turns. That's the other thing about taunt. You can apply it to one target for three turns, or all targets for two. Pretty cool. So I'm gonna quit. Yeah, I'm gonna quick slice the healer frog. Then pistol him to kill him the floor. That's a healer out of the way. Uh, Biconius, that's pretty nice that it gives options on Ton. Yeah, I really like that. I like um, abilities that are kind of modal, so you can like do a strong thing with a caveat or a kind of more generalized thing but less powerful. It's cool as well that you can get told what your uh, your damage values are on the uh, thing so you can uh, see that eviscerate it's going to deal 10 to 13 damage and then 60 over three turns. Um, it's going to be good for planning out your turns. Now, This froggy boy is going to attack the weakest target, which is Karina. Deals 47 to 58 damage, so he's going to do about half her health. And he is going to go after Karina and Rowan. Doesn't have sleep available. <laughs> Plan, pa, more DPS. Yeah, I should really just use the cheapest attack with everyone instead of planning these things out. Oh, do I want to let her tank that hit? She won't. She definitely won't die because the sturdy frog only deals like twenty-one to twenty-six. The little frog deals six to seven. So yeah, I think what I'm gonna do is uh, I'm gonna take out the little frog just to get him out of play. And then I'm not gonna taunt because they can kill Rowan with both attacks. So he is gonna drink him some booze. Okay, so green attacks those hits, that's okay. I'm gonna eviscerate the I'm gonna try taking out the sturdy one before the elite. And we're just gonna have to taunt both. Uh, I like Roland's style, boost during battle. It's Roland, but yeah. Oh no. Taunt's gonna last another turn. If I slash, they're gonna kill him, so I'm gonna have to boost him. Okay, so now. Corina's gonna have to heal herself. Uh, if I booze again, they're going to. Yeah, I'm just gonna have to take a chance. That's fine, I'm okay with that. 
So if Corina sleeps the deadly frog. Rowan can taunt sturdy. Oh, I have four viewers now. A little additional viewer. Sunder armor so that he doesn't take reduced damage. Rowan's going to do him a heckin' pistol. Okay, if I quick slice, the the bleed damage should kill him. Oh wait, he's not bleeding. Oh, that was stupid. Um. Okay, no, this is fine. This is fine. No, it's not, because the deadly frog is going to attack Karina, which will kill her. Anna Playa. Hello, random guy from Scotland. How's the stream going? Um, it's not going too bad so far. I wasn't expecting to have four viewers, so uh, happy days. Um, I mean, it would be nice to have slightly more than that, but we will see how it goes. Oh, Acratic Human is now following. Thank you for the follow, Acratic Human. I'm guessing that's a human from the RPG Maker community. Uh, right, back to this. Oh, Rowan's going to have to taunt. There's nothing else for it. Yeah, so he gets taken down a peg. You see seven viewers. Oh, okay. It says four on my thing. Uh, Anna Playa, I kind of saw your post on Facebook and thought I'd drop in and Anna is fine. Okay, I will proceed to call you Anna. Uh, confirmed I am human, so I will call you human from this point. Human is here. Yes, he is. Um, human is an absolutely fantastic individual in the RPG Maker community. Um, just for anybody who's watching who is also from that community. Um, he does a lot of um, action sequences in RPG Maker MV and MZ. And he is definitely worth um, hitting up if you need help with that because he's really good at it. Uh, right, back to this. So I can kill the Sturdy Frog, which is fine. Yeah, that's... Yeah, that's what I'm going to do. Rowan can boost, so that will give him enough HP to tank the next hit. Times. So then if I eviscerate him for the bleed. Oh, I have vastly miscalculated on that one. Oh, sugar. Uh, BG says, I'll probably be annoying him to death when I get to the point of doing action sequences. Yeah, that's probably for the best. Oh, I am now up to seven viewers. Okay, so apparently my uh, my Twitch page must have like a more up-to-date viewer count than my uh, OBS does. Uh, Human says, anytime BG, my wife's response when I talk to her about it is, what the hell are you talking about? Which sounds like what my wife says anytime I'm talking about RPG Maker stuff. Uh, Anna says, this looks pretty well put together. Um, yeah, Stegosoft's really good. Um, they also did a game called Arafel before this, um, which kind of has a similar style. Um, and it's probably one of my favorite RPG Maker games. Um, Evelyn is very talented in terms of like story and like putting things together and dialogue and whatnot. I think uh, Joey did most of the stuff in the battles. Um, they had a few people do like the art and the, the portraits and whatnot. So, yeah, really uh, solid game. Uh, not quite sure how the sales are going on it at the moment, but it released on several platforms, and I think it's doing quite well. Uh, anyway, so I know that the Elite Frog is going to attack Karina and probably kill her, so I'm going to heal her so she doesn't die. Oh, okay. Oh, attacks the weakest target, one with the lowest HP, not the one who... Ah! Uh, <laughs> I am stupid. Hi, I am very, very stupid, and that was uh, not a good move. Ah, uh, balls. Right, okay, so I'm going to put him to sleep and then revive the win, and then eternally hope that the ground swallows me up for the shame of the idiotic move I just made. I cannot believe I just did that. Uh, human says, just see the idle sprites unpumped. Yeah, the animations are amazing. 
Uh, BG is like, whoops, yep, that is very much an understatement. Uh, Bacon, I'm just the emotional support Bacon for game makers who dabbles in art. And that is very true. He has been my emotional support Bacon for uh, many uh, a day now. I'll say many a day, many a year. I was trying to be cute, but like that just kind of gave the impression that I haven't known him for like ever. Okay, let's try and be smarter about this. So he is going to attack Rowan if I don't heal him. However, no, he's going to attack Corina if I don't. I'm just shoot me seriously. What am I on? I'm going to sunder his armor so that he goes defense down. And then I'm going to taunt with Rowan. If you want damage or so, that's fine. Eviscerate for the bleed. Right, he cannot kill me, so I am going to slash for the extra bleed. Uh, bacon, there we go. Restart stream because it kept buffering on me. Lovely reception areas. Oh yeah, buffering is just the worst. Karina gonna quick slay it. Oh, actually. One remaining turn cooldown. But then Rowan has taunted. Yeah, I'm just gonna kill him. Victory! 40 caps, 27 experience, level up, and I get a Warrior's Stone 1. This magic stone feels heavy in your hand. It is a crafting item with a value of 13. That's the other cool thing about this game as well. The very first time you get an item, it gives you this little new item discovered pop-up telling you what it is and what it does. So you don't have to like be like, Warrior's Stone 1, what the hell is this? And then go into the item menu and see like what the thing is. Look at this, so many cool quality of life things in this game. Tutorial, level up. You've leveled up. Enemies give experience points, which contribute to the entire party's level meter. The party levels up as a unit, so there's no need to try to juggle experience points between multiple party members as your party grows. In turn, leveling up rewards the party with talent points, which are also shared across the entire party. You will need to decide where and to whom they are allocated. As you unlock talents for any given character, the cost of their next talent will increase. Okay, cool. Other cool thing, quality of life in the menu. If there is a new option that you have not yet gone to, there will be a little green plus next to it. Or not that you've not gone to, that if you've got stuff to do there. So whenever you have talent points to spend or enough to get a new talent, you'll see that little green plus, which is awesome. Uh, character will have the little green plus if you've got new equipment to equip. Um, I, think, I don't think quests does it, but yeah, this is really cool. And you've got this map of the region as well, which I think is really awesome. Look kind of um, Arcadia over there. This is Cerinthia. Then down south you've got Tarek. Uh, you can zoom in with X and C. So if we zoom in a bit, you can see I'm currently in Evanhart. And then you've got Ocean Vale over there. And just, like the the geography of this place has been really well thought through as well. And it, oh, I, I love this game. I will gush about it. I really love. It. And cool thing on the uh, menu as well is it tells you like the sub place that you're at, so Norman Evanhart, and also the continent you're on, so Cerinthia. And then it's got the continent's flag as well, which I think is just a fantastic uh, little uh, detail. Like, um, the flag will change as you go to different continents. It's just little things like that that are seemingly not important things that you might not even notice, but the developers have just done that as a cool little thing. Okay, so let's see here. Definitely going to heal Rowan. Then talents. So I've got two points available. Unlock cost is one. So I could get a new ability and a stat increase for one character. But what I'm going to do instead is I'm just going to learn both skills. Because skills in this game are choice, and choice is definitely a good thing. Especially because a lot of skills have cooldowns. One thing I do wish is that when you learned a new skill, you got that kind of new thing discovered pop-up that tells you what it does without having to go into the menu. Not a big deal, but it would be a really nice quality of life change if they did that. 
So Fury deals heavy damage to a target, namely 71 to 88 at the moment with a cost of 30 Rage. Um, so you can't use it immediately, you do have to kind of build up that Rage resource with Rowan before you can use it, which is kind of the trade-off for the damage it does. And then Deathblow, 121 to 148 damage, very cool, uh, costs 60 energy, deals heavy damage to a target, and restores 20 energy if the target dies. Um, so it's kind of a... I think there's a there's an ability in WoW that's kind of similar to that, where you kind of get some of the resource back if the target dies from it. Anyway, let's uh, save our game and then go and defeat our final frog. Okay, so we see here that there's six of the little tiny frogs and one of the uh, big the the big boys. And you would be forgiven for thinking that this is not going to be that hard because we know from the previous battle that the little frogs don't hit that hard. But what you need to remember is that commanders issue battle orders, one of which is orders attack. And that turns those little frogs from doing piddly seven damage plinks to, I think they end up dealing like 22 damage a hit, which with six of them is pretty bad. So the first thing we would do is sleep the commander. And then just gonna take these little boys out a little bit at a time. So I know that if, I could take one out immediately with the pistol. In fact, that's what I'm gonna do because that'll get the cooldown going. If I do slash on them, we'll get the bleeding effect and then that should kill them with the bleed damage as well. Yeah, try and take out as many as I can here. So, quick slice on that way. Slash this guy. Got a critical hit there, which is always nice. So, yeah, I can take out five of the six frogs. So, when he issues battle orders, that will only be one dealing 22 damage you need to worry about, and not six. Guy. On throwing. Oh, I'm down to five viewers. Apparently, two people didn't really like the look of Rise of the Third Power too much. Ah oh, well. It's all good. So, we've got one turn remaining cooldown on Sleeping Powder. So, what much are we going to do? I'm going to quick slice to get the. Slight bit of damage. <laughs> BG, or they were bots. That is entirely possible, BG. Bots could have joined my stream. Boost for the heal. He gets attack, that's fine. Put the frog to sleep. Free healing! That was stupid. Oh. Look at that animation, how cool is that? Just tosses up the bottle and then like throw it, throws it at the thing and then poof, the pistol. Ah, uh, so good. Got seven new cats, 12 experience. Good times. Alright, looks like that's the last of these toads. I'm sure Commander Titans will be happy to hear that. And sure enough, quest updated exterminators to show that I have completed it. Well, I need to speak to Stein. Uh, BG sadly got to go now, thanks for showing it. Yeah, thanks for uh, joining me for a little bit, BG. Um, hope you will be able to join me next week, but if not, uh, cheers for being there, and I will see you next time. Or, well, next time you're able to make it, at least. Pet the doggo again, because got to pet the doggo. Human, whoa, that attack. Yeah, the animation is just solid. And that is not even the coolest one in the game. Like, there are ones that are infinitely better than that. Well, I don't hear their infernal croaking any longer. Is it done? Yeah, it's done. Thank the stars. Well, you two... Pardon me. Will you two guards return to your posts? As for the exterminators, here's your reward. 
New item discovered. Book. Novice. <laughs> I killed frogs, I got a book. Instructions to craft novice level equipment. Type crafting. Crafting is the primary, primary means of improving a character's attributes. Throughout your adventure, you will come across recipe books that will unlock the knowledge needed to create powerful equipment. This equipment will require special stones obtained from powerful elite enemies. And it just so happens that I got a warrior stone one from one of those uh, encounters. Interesting. What is this, a crafting recipe? You guys pay with recipes here? Hey, uh, we were also supposed to uh, have a look at the rest of the castle? Ah, good thinking. Lord Philip must have asked you to do that, eh? Uh, right. Most of the castle will be locked up this time of morning. Lord Philip furnished you with a key, I trust? He didn't. Hmm, that ain't like him. Man's usually got a stick up his bum about that sort of thing. Uh, you'll keep that between us, I hope. Well, he's got an awful lot to deal with, what with the wedding and all. Here, I'll lend you my key. You make damn sure I get it back, though. Got a silver key. This key will open all silver locks in an area. And this, friends, is a prime example of how social engineering attacks work. I will, I promise. We'll be on the lookout for more toads. Okay, on to Ariel's room upstairs. That guy paid me with a recipe book. Hey, if you ever learn to read, maybe you can make some use out of it. Let's go. Narrator, they would not, in fact, be looking on the lookout for more toads. So let's have a look at crafting. So the first thing to see is that I cannot craft anything because I do not have the whetstone yet. Uh, Voodoo2013. Hey, it's me. Right. Is it Lunesis? 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 Uh, I've never quite been sure how your name is pronounced. I kind of internally pronounce it as uh, Lunesis. Lunesis. So I've been pronouncing it right. That's cool. Uh, so I need to get me a whetstone. I am on the lookout for one. And what do you know? There's a chest. Whetstone! A finely grained stone. A fine grain <laughs> Let me just put my teeth in. A fine grained stone used for sharpening cutting tools. And now, as I said, that you get that little green plus showing that I can craft something. So I'm going to do Stein's Necklace, an heirloom representing strength and resilience, which gives me plus three strength. Or I can do Razor's Edge for Karina, which is a razor sh extra sharp dagger's edge, and that is plus three strength. So either can get plus three strength. What you think about is how much strength each character has. Corina already has 27 strength, Rowan's only got 16, being the tank he deals less damage. So I think on the whole, it's going to be better in the long run if I give him a little bit of extra. Um, you can see there, this item has been permanently equipped. So you don't change characters' equipment in this game, you just craft them better stuff. Uh, which I think is cool, because you don't need to worry about inventory. You'll never have like weapons crafting up your thing. Well, you will to an extent, but like you don't have to think, right, I need to have like X number of these swords and whatnot. It's, it's a really cool system, I think. I mean, I'll be honest, the game's not without its flaws, because all I've said so far is good stuff about it, and it does have flaws, like any game does. But I think it does a really good job of covering for them with really cool little elements that offset them. I guess one thing um, the developers are really good at is recognising when something maybe isn't 100% but kind of off offsetting it with stuff that makes it not as bad. It's, it, it's cool. I, I really like this game. And I will sing its praises till the cows come on. Uh, okay, so Castle Mage attacks all targets and she's going to deal 35 to 42 damage. I do not want that to happen. That is very bad. Uh, random attack for 70 to 22. So these guys, not so shabby. So first things first, let's see if I can kill the mage with death blow. I can, so I'm going to do that. And you see there, she got 20 energy back for that being a killing blow. Can't use fury because I don't have 30 rage. So... 
I don't really want to taunt because splitting the damage seems like a better option at this point, so I'm just going to pistol this guy. He attacks Karina, he attacks Rowan, that's fine. I'm just going to do the death blow thing again. I should actually have done that on the other guy. I'm also going to taunt him. Karina's going to put him to sleep. Enter the free healing phase. Hmm. I wonder if Sunder Armor won't break sleep because it doesn't deal damage. Nice. Pardon me. Uh, Linus says, animations in this game look so good, might get this instead of triangle strategy. Um, it is definitely worth picking up, Linus. Um, I mean, I am possibly slightly biased because I was one of the beta testers on this game and a close friend of one of the developers and just really loved their previous game. But yeah, I would definitely recommend getting this. It is such a good game. The, the story, there's a few twists and turns here and there. It's not like massively twisty. Uh, especially if you know 1930s Europe history, you can kind of see where things are going in some bits. But on the whole, just it's a really well-polished quality game and definitely worth having in your library. Uh, I would recommend it to anyone that's into RPGs. Uh, Anna thinking I might get it too? Yeah, go for it. Um, it is available on Steam. Uh, it's on Switch. Uh, you can get it on PS4, Xbox One. Uh, I think it's on Mac as well, and possibly Linux. I think there's a Linux uh, release. So yeah, good times. Happy days for all. <laughs> I found it on Steam already. Good times. Uh, if you eviscerate... Ruin. I'm fine with that. Let's see if I can kill him before he gets another turn. Yes, I can. That's one thing I didn't actually think of when I didn't taunt them and was like splitting the damage is better is that Corina doesn't have a self heal, whereas Rowan does. So I should probably actually have taunted there. But you know, hindsight and all that. Eh, she should be okay without a heal. Cutscene! Wow. Rowan, do you know what this is? I'm guessing whatever you're about to say is more interesting than Cerinthia's throne room. It is, you jerk. This is where the Great War ended. What, did they fight the final battle in here or something? The treaty that ended the war was signed in this very room. What a little shiny light effect. Sorry, I guess it's stupid. My parents both fought and died in the Great War. I've heard so many stories about them. It's just strange to be standing where it ended so far from my homeland. Kid, we do not have time for this. Sorry, we can go. I'm just going to... Uh... Pop in here and say sup to the king and queen. Why don't we just kidnap the king? Nope, we're here for the princess. Kidnapping the king won't stop the wedding. Yeah, but why is that our goal? She didn't tell us for a reason. That way when we get caught, they can't torture it out of us. Ooh, good thinking. Reina sure is smart. I wonder what torture feels like. Karina worries me in the best way. <laughs> But the reason I came in here was for this. New item discovered. A volatile trinket. A medallion. Gently warm to the touch. Accessory. Has a 2% chance to negate damage taken. Tutorial. Accessories. Each character can equip one accessory at a time, which offers a wide array of bonuses. As you emerge victorious in battle while wearing an accessory, it will gain experience points towards its attunement. Once attuned, the accessory will gain additional stats and increasing gold value. 
Now, as you may imagine, I am totally putting this on Kareem. No, I'm putting it on Rowan because he is the tank, and being able to negate taking damage when he is the taunter is just too good to pass up. It just effectively makes his taunt even more useful, which is great. I love the synergy that some of the things have in this. Just a nice camera pan up to the throne room. Just demonstrating the significance of this place. Bacon, how many different characters are there? Um, in total, there are eight characters in the roster. Um, you don't get the next one for a little bit yet. It's quite a while before you get the next one after that. And I think you get a few in quick succession. And if I remember correctly, I, I, uh, I'm trying to remember if one of them's optional or not. I do not think there's an optional character, but I may be wrong. I cannot remember if he's mandatory. Here we are, the main hall. Ariel's room is upstairs. You know, now that we've got this exterminator's cover, I wonder if this place has any loot. I can't take two minutes to remember my dead parents, but you've got time to loot. And what's coming up now is a quote that I really want on a t-shirt. It's one of my favourite quotes in the game, and I just love it. It's so rowing. Come on, there's always time for loot. Just his little smile when he says it as well. You really are an ass. Yeah, Rowan is very much the lovable rogue archetype, and I just I love everything about him. He's like such a great character. Okay, I'm just gonna save here. What the juice? Okay, so we've got combat with let's have a look see. Bacon, ship me a text of the quote I can make and design the shirt. Oh, nice. That is good to know. I'm pretty sure I posted a screenshot of it in the Discord, so I'll grab it off there. Right, so we've got a castle guard, 17 to 22 damage randomly, and the tanky strengthens defense. Righto. So, first thing, gonna just take out one of these guys with death blow. Death blow is such a good. Uh, move like it's basically the very first thing you should do with talent points is unlock that. There is no point in not having it. Uh, going to taunt both of these guys, I think. I'm just going to put his defense up. That's fine. I can live with that. Death blow to the face for this guy. Oh, critical as well, 204 damage. That is sexy. Love it. Uh, so he's going to pistol, pistol. I didn't get a pistol in the face in return. Uh, let's see. I'm gonna sunder his armor, get the defense up, buff down. Rowan's gonna do a slash. Eviscerate for the extra bleeds. Everyone's going to taunt. Uh, Lunasis, not sure why people think these animations are too slow or battles are too long or whatever. It looks fine to me. Uh, yeah, so I think a lot of that came from the demo when the animations were quite a bit slower. And I think they've um, done a lot of balance passes on like uh, enemy HP and stuff since then. So it, it's a lot better now than it was. The demo was quite sluggish, I think. But yeah, I think it's in a really good place now. Especially, like, this is on Expert, so obviously it's going to take a bit longer to do. Like, um, Hard, I think, is in a pretty good place. Um, normal is just very straightforward. And then, uh, uh, I love this thing. They've got a story difficulty as well, where you just get a skill that is insta-win. You just use it and everything dies. And I think that's just brilliant. It's like, if you don't like the combat, if you don't want the combat, you just want the story and you don't care about the battle system, you can just go, sploop, you're gone, done. <laughs> Big <laughs> Ah, yes, the enemies are using my favourite spells in a fantasy environment. I cast gun. Oh, just wait until you see the weapon that the third character uses. It is something else, man. Seriously. 
So I'm gonna put. Uh, might get a a free heal in here. Oh no! Just accidentally used wait because that was the, uh, stupid job. But for my trouble, I get three decats, thirteen experience, and two lesser heals. Nice. Uh, you know what, I think they're not doing too terribly, so I'm going to leave that heal for the moment. It's a shame Rowan can't just drink his booze out of battle. Alright, uh, let's have a look. This will lead out to the courtyard. There's no way it won't be quarreling with guards. Now, you can see there's a passability error there. The uh, top of that it should appear above the characters, I think. Uh, oh no, it's the carpet, so that's fine. There are a few bugs still in the game, um, but... I think a lot of them have been uh, reported now and are being actively worked on. There should be a new Steam build, I think Joey said, next week. So it'll be good to see that. Okay, second floor. Reyna said this is where the princess's room is. Now here, the... Vision cones aren't implemented particularly fantastically, and Evelyn said the same herself. Um, she wishes that they could have done this a bit differently, because it's so easy to get sneak attacks on these guys. It doesn't really detract from it, though, I don't think. So, Deathblow. Bacon, show me a single game that has zero bugs. Oh, God, right. So, I don't know if you saw... Um, RPG Maker Web did a um, game jam called Touch the Stars and I entered it with uh, Kit, my wife. We made a Magical Girl style game where it was basically like, um, I don't know if you've, um, you know anything about the live action Powerpuff Girls thing, but it's like the conceit of that is that it's basically like the Powerpuff Girls in their 30s when they're like retired and from crime fighting and all washed up and stuff. And we did a very similar thing where it's like these magical girls, but it's like the game starts after they've disbanded and you have to like get the gang back together and everything. And like, I think we did quite a good job with it. Um, we obviously didn't win because there's just so many bugs. Uh, I actually have a bug where an entire section of the game cannot be accessed because I forgot to turn a switch back on. And just, uh, I can't believe that I... I dropped the ball that badly. In my defense, I wasn't able to do a full test run through at the end because I submitted it at three o'clock in the morning, uh, obviously being in GMT when stuff is American time, I have to do stupid things. But um, my wife had surgery the next morning and I had to drive her. So I figured that going to sleep at three o'clock in the morning and getting a few hours of sleep and not being a zombie and not potentially crashing the car and killing my wife was a better prospect than having a bug-free game. And uh, she just so happened to agree, oddly enough. Uh, am I too loud, by the way, or is my voice a decent volume level? I just want to make sure that I'm not like talk, talking really, really loudly. Because I've got headphones on and I cannot really hear myself particularly well. Uh, Bacon, you're good. Awesome. Uh, death blow on that guy. Now what I am not going to do is bleed this guy so that he dies before I can do the healing thing. And I'm also not going to accidentally wait so that he dies. <laughs> Bacon, boss could have drove her. Um, okay, so boss is our dog. He's a Malamute, and unfortunately, as much as we keep um, imploring him to, he has not yet passed his driving test or even had a single driving lesson. Uh, he, he's such a freeloader, just stays here without paying rent and just eats all the food. Like, I mean all the food. Like If it is not nailed down, the dog will eat it. Uh, I'm going to put him to slurp. I should actually have gotten near death before I did this, but never mind. Uh, I'm just going to sunder armor because I don't think that's going to wake him up. And then booze again. And now we're nice and healed. So eviscerate, get bleed from slash. 
Bacon, he's a boss, he doesn't need lessons. <laughs> Anna. Ah, uh, but he's beautiful, so instantly pardoned for all transgressions. See, you would think that. You would think that. Nah, he is an absolutely gorgeous dog. Like, very, very photogenic. Anytime anyone sees him, they're like, Oh my god, you have such a beautiful dog! But honestly, if you lived with him, you would be slightly less willing to forgive him his sins. That's all I'm saying. So we see here, Quick Slice is actually going to kill this guy, and... Eh, yeah, I'm just going to kill him. Victory! And for my troll, I get three Ducats, 13 experience. So I'm up to 13 Ducats now, so I can maybe buy a healing potion and a peanut. Hey, hey guy. <laughs> Standing right beside it, I was like, surprise! Whoop. Almost knocked my headphones off there. <sighs> So I actually bought these headphones specifically for this, uh, doing my streaming, so that I wasn't like um, doing audio feedback from the the webcam speaker uh, microphone thing. So be be very like, you should feel honoured that I just went out and like dropped money on these things just for you guys. Bacon, I'm going to ship you a husky so you can name him henchman. I think the husky might be slightly perturbed to be like. Uh, sent in the mail, but I mean, sure, go for it. I don't have enough dogs. Death blow! Taunt. Eagle boom. Eagle hands up. I'm okay with that. That's fine. See, defense up, they might as well just not do anything for a turn, because I'm just going to Sunder Armour them. Uh, right, what do I want to do here? I want to death blow this guy. Gonna pistol him. Boom. He's gonna pistol me. It's just a whole. <laughs> I cast gun, as Bacon said. She is going to. eviscerate. Bacon, or get you a mink pick of them. A mink pick of them? So it's henchman one, two. I don't know what mink pick of them means, but I'm guessing you mean like more than one. So it's henchman one, two. It's a, oh, mink pack of them. Okay. Yeah, henchman one, henchman two. I, I, I can see that being a thing, certainly. We're going to slash him. That puts an extra bleed on. He goes boom. So now we sleep in powder. Uh, Lunasis, I think it's okay to give the normal baddies turn wasting moves. They're just there for beating on and maybe some attrition before the boss. Yeah, that is true, actually. Oh, mini pack. Yeah, okay, that makes more sense then. I didn't want to like say, yeah, I still don't get it because I was like not wanting to put you on the spot like that. But yeah, okay, I get you now. So is he still asleep? Cool, so bleeding doesn't remove sleep. That is good to know. Sun run. <laughs> Bacon, I run it past Kit. Um, yeah, so um, I don't know if you saw our Facebook post about it. Um, sadly, our cat JJ, um, we had to have her put to sleep uh, last week, the week before. Uh, so we now just have the one dog. And we were saying, like, right, we're never getting any more pets. Uh, that's it, we're done. And then about five minutes later, we're like, should we get a puppy? So, yeah, um, she might be okay with uh, another dog. We'll need to wait and see. Ooze! And Rowan is back in fighting for him. And victory is mine. Three Ducats and 15 experience are my reward for this. Knock, knock. The key Stein gave us doesn't fit this lock. Are you serious? Yes. You're a thief. Can't you pick the lock or something? No, the only locks I know how to pick are the ones in the jails back in Nadim, since I get arrested so often. Got arrested, even. Nice. Well, I guess we better see if we can find the right key, then. 
The only part of this castle we haven't been through yet is down the stairs of the main hall below us. May as well start back there. Those stairs lead to the third floor, which is back where we started. Maybe we should head downstairs and see if we can find another key or something. This where, as much as I love the dialogue in Rise of the Third Power, that particular bit I think verges into what I call gameplay dialogue, where you kind of break the suspension of disbelief and immersion for a bit to railroad the player slightly and be like, yeah, you totally have to go here and do the thing. And it just kind of goes a bit too much into, hey player, I see you, you are playing a game, this is where you should go. And I just think Rowan's dialogue there could maybe be a little bit more natural sounding, but still get that point across. Okay, so we've got four dudes here. Um, so, death blow on... I'm guessing these guys are all going to be the same, except that guy. Oh, he issues orders. Right, so I don't want him to issue attack orders, so I am just going to death blow his face. Lunasis. Oh man, they don't even close the door. Do they live in a barn? I mean, Rowan is from like a little tiny village in the middle of nowhere um, and Karina was a thief who was constantly in jail so yeah I don't think they're really used to closing doors well I mean Karina's used to having doors closed on her in fairness but yeah so I'm going to taunt all three of these guys just to make sure their damage goes to Rowan's face oh, look at that he's wonderfully tanky Right. I did say the, the combat is balanced in this. What I will say is that maybe, just maybe, Karina's death blow on Expert not one-shot the enemies so that you cannot just identify your biggest threat and just immediately wipe it off the board. I think that would add a little bit of extra challenge. I don't know. Something to think about. Uh, I'm just going to take another one of these guys out of the picture. So Rowan's going to taunt one of them for three turns. I cannot use Death Blow because I don't have the energy for it. So I am going to put him to sleep so he can't attack. Oh. J-F-R-O-S-T-P used a uh, emoji that I think is a person waving by the looks of it. Hello, thank you for tuning in. I am glad to see you here and I hope that uh, you will enjoy the stream and uh, stay a while. Oh, I'm also um, very sorry guys that I didn't start at 7 when I was supposed to. <laughs> um, you may have some of you may have caught this when I started, but I I hurt me a heckin' derp. So yesterday I wanted to test my equipment, just make sure that everything happened exactly as it was supposed to, and I didn't run into any technical difficulty, and I didn't have packet loss and all that good stuff. So what I did was I did a test stream, which goes to a stream key that like goes to this. Uh, I think it's Twitch. Twitch Inspector or something, I think it's called. And uh, that just kind of tells you if you've got any packet loss during your thing and if the stream's all stable and all that. And that was great. However, when I went live, I forgot to change my stream key back to my Twitch one. And then I was like, okay, so OBS says I'm live, Twitch says I'm offline, what the hell is going on? Which is probably good because when I started that stream, I had my mic muted. I'm really not good at this. <laughs> it's going to be a learning curve. I'm so sorry. Um, so yeah, um, turns out for about 10 minutes actually, I was uh, streaming to a test stream and nobody was watching me and it wasn't going to Twitch and I had no idea and it was just very bad. Uh, Bacon says, is it area based for any enemy difficulty or experience based? I believe it's based on uh, party level, I think. Do not quote me on that. Uh, right, where was I? Ah, yes. So he's taunted. 
gonna pistol this dude. Karina can quick slice him to death. That's okay. So Rowan's gonna do what he does best. Yeah, Karina will eviscerate him. Should have reapplied taunt. So I'm gonna do that. Uh, one turn remaining one thing, that's fine. So I could kill him, but I'm actually not going to. What I'm gonna do is heal Karina. One's gonna freeze again. And now kill. Victory! Oh, I'm up to six viewers again. Nice. Uh, hello to anyone who's just joined. Uh, thank you for joining my stream. Um, and I hope you are enjoying me playing Rise of the Third Power and waffling on when stuff brain goes in. And um, yeah, so, so I heavily suspect, although I'm not officially diagnosed with it that I have ADHD and I apologize for the fact that I am just going to spew words now and again when I get an idea or something occurs to me and I'm just going to go on a massive diatribe about it, uh, big tangential asides and then I'll, like something will remind me of a thing and then I'll start going off on a tangent from that tangent and before you know it I'm telling you about grocery store visits from a week ago. Um, but uh, hopefully I will be able to keep that stuff to a minimum because you're here to watch me play a game. Uh, so I will play the game and not do that. Okay, so I've got 40 caps, 18 experience. Cool thing about this, I need uh, 5 experience to level up and I know for a fact that I'm going to get that from this patrol here. So... Ooh, sneaky. So, Karina, death row. He did. Rolling taunt. I suppose there has been some criticism leveled at the combat for being a bit samey. And you know, just, I can sort of see that. I, I can understand where they're coming from. I don't agree with it. I think the combat is fantastic. I don't mind that my initial thing here is just, yep, Corina death blows a thing to kill it, rolling taunts of all of the things, Corina death blows a thing to kill it, because this is still very early in the game, and there are going to be more things coming up, and the combat does get quite detailed and deep. And I think, at this point, it's fine. Like, this is still more involved than just spamming attack all the time, and I've seen so many RPGs where the initial, like, maybe 10, 20 minutes of the game all you're doing in combat is just spamming attack. Like, even if you start with skills, like, it's not worth using them and you're just sending attack, 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 attack. Like, this is engaging. I like it. Um, I'm doing stuff. And that's really cool. I like it. Lunasis. No reason to have redundant abilities. You've got to find the happy spot in the middle. I'm, I'm guessing you mean no reason not to have redundant abilities. Or maybe you do mean no reason to have it on. Uh, it, it's interesting. I think my philosophy is that combat in an RPG is effectively a numbers game. And you've got your numbers, and the enemy's got their numbers, and you're trying to reduce their number to zero before they reduce yours to zero. And it's effectively trying to find a balancing act of stuff that furthers your goal of reducing their number or hindering their efforts to reduce yours. And that's where good combat comes into play is when you've got a decent interplay of those things and a good choice of ways to get that number to zero. Right, what am I doing here? Uh, eviscerate for the bleeds. Rowan do him a taunt. 
Is it Linus is, well, don't want to just have attack, but also don't need too many abilities. Yeah. I do agree with that to an extent, but what, what I will say one caveat. I don't know if you have played a game on the uh, RPG Maker web forums. Uh, I think it's by Uro, Auro. I uh, don't know how to pronounce the name. It's called um, The Unborn Daughter. And the whole conceit of that game is that the main character, the protagonist, has a variation of blue magic where basically she can learn every ability the enemies use in the entire game. Like anything an enemy you can use, you can learn it. And it gets to a point where you've got loads and loads of these things that you are basically never going to use but it's still cool because it's like the, the gotta catch them all sort of aspect to it i really enjoy just collecting abilities um like if i see in battle that an enemy's got an ability i don't have yet i will drag it out until i get it and it's just it, it really appeals to the the, the co collect the what's the word the collect well the collector in me but the completionist that's the thing the completionist in me it appeals to uh, so Sunder on this dude. Uh, Rowan can give him a lead. And he can go boom, and then I'll sleep him. And then Rowan will do him a booze. You know what, I'm actually going to just intentionally draw this out for a little bit because... I just really want to watch the uh, animation for uh, Fury again, to be honest. Oh, I can't. Ah, so there's a limit to the number of times you can wait. That's... I didn't actually realise that. That is really interesting. Ah, well, I'll just kill him then. So another thing as well, when you've got more than three party members, which will happen in a little while, um, you can switch party members in combat but you can only do it a certain number of times and then the option gets locked. And the other cool thing with that is when you've got more than three, if you get a sneak attack, you can choose your party before you go into battle. But if you don't get a sneak attack, if you are snuck up upon, or if you're fighting something that doesn't allow you a sneak attack, you just go in with the last party you battled with. So if you've done like a substitution in battle and that's your party, then that's the party you go into the next battle with, unless you get to switch it. Which I just there's so many just really cool little little details in this game that just make it rise above the competition in my estimation. Okay, so here's an interesting thing: we've got two points available. Our unlock cost is one. So I think second verse is the first. We'll give Rowan plus five speed, and we'll give Karina plus two percent critical hit. And then I am going to save. Because saving is good, kids. Here we are on the balcony. Can't really do anything here, but hey, nice view. I like how there's a very subtle kind of lighting change for the time of night as well. Uh, Anna, and the storm is killing my internet, so I'm going to stop watching. Don't want to see too much if I'm going to play it anyway. Thanks for streaming, John. You are very welcome, Anna. Thank you so much for tuning in. Um, I'm guessing if you're going to be playing it, you won't be tuning in uh, next week to uh, see it, because spoilers. So um, I will hopefully see you next time I stream a game you haven't played. Um, or, or maybe you will join. I don't know. But um, thank you for coming anyway. Uh, it was thoroughly great to have you here, and uh, you have a good evening. It's going to pet the cat again for no reason whatsoever. Let's say no reason whatsoever. I am petting the cat because there is a cat and it can be pet. And I need no further reason. Let's go up here. Someone explain to me just how many dinner plates we need because this seems like too many. I actually said to Evelyn on Discord that I really think that what they should have done here was have her go, Who knew we owned 8,000 salad plates? But I don't know if anyone would have gotten the joke. So. Oh, hello. Are you the help King Horatio hired on for the wedding? Yep, that's me. I'm sure the king is routinely in the habit of hiring pirates for things. Look, Arcadians. I didn't bring enough booze to fight those assholes. They're tough. We avoid. We better avoid them. <laughs> bring more next time. 
Now, you know what? I'm going to save it. And then I'm going to try my hand at fighting these guys. Because I'm pretty sure I'm just going to get my ass handed to me. But that's going to be funny for you guys to watch, probably. So, uh, let's see. Death blow is not enough. I'm going to eviscerate one. Let's see. We're going to sub to 72 damage. So there we are. I'm going to taunt both of them. Ooh, that is painful. Sunder armor, this one. Ooh, now here's the thing. They could deal up to 144 damage. Which will kill Rowan, so I'm gonna do some. Script. Can I kill him? No, I cannot. Um, okay, so Booze is not going to cut it here, so I think I'm going to have to use a laser gun. Yeah. Yeesh. Right, uh, so Death Blow on that guy. Everyone is going to taunt. I think Touchwood from here it should be doable. I mean, ow, that does very much hurt. Thunder Armor. Is it up? I'm going to death blow. It's not going to kill him. I'm not going to get any energy back. But that will put me in a decent place, I think. So now I sleep him. Some of that precious HP's back. Not my nine's enough. I'll be fine. That wasn't too bad, actually. I get six to cats and fifty-two experience. A revive and an opportunist's band. Ugh. A simple copper ring covered in runes. Damage from critical hits increased by 50%. Yes, thank you very much. That's going on to immediately. I put my head in my hands there because I thought I'd forgotten to equip the volatile drink it on Rowan, but I actually didn't. I remembered, which is great. Save the game. Now, uh, let's see. God, I've already been streaming for an hour and 40 minutes. Let's see what I've got here. Lesser heels are always nice to have. This door cannot be opened at this time. But what time can it be opened, game? Look at me. Hey. Hey, look. Nope. Nothing.
Karina, Mage, Death. Ruin, Taunt, Double. Karina, Death Blow. So that one damage there, that was the Volatile Trinket reducing the, uh, or negating the damage. That doesn't reduce it to zero, but that's one damage is very much preferable to 20. And never underestimate the healing power of booze, kids. just get two. Karina just got two turns in a row there. Was she supposed to get two turns in a row? I have no idea. But I did get three Ducats and 15 experience and a lesser heal, which is lovely. Surprise! Can't use booze on Karina. That would be probably way overpowered, though. Love the part the particle effects that come off the weapons as well. Three decaps, fourteen experience. I know these fights aren't the most engaging thing to be watching right now, um, but I promise you it's about to get real very, very quickly once I kill these guys. Lunatus. I get torn between the FF4 system of each character having set moves and the Final Fantasy VI system of customizing. Yeah, it's a, it's always a struggle. And um, what I am doing for my game Tundra is that each character has like a, a unique battle mechanic, um, and some of that does involve having like set moves. But the spellcasters, uh, Catherine and um, Zach, they have a kind of make your own sort of thing where you craft your own spells using components you, they have like x number of slots and you decide what goes into them like you can be all right okay i want a spell that does moderate damage with a fire element that inflicts poison and costs half its uh, uh, like some additional effect and the cost of the spell will be determined by how many things it does and how strong it is. Look, at it, you can have whatever loadout you feel you need, but obviously the more powerful the stuff, the less of it you can use at any given time. That's the idea, anyway. Victory!
Okay, so I think that's the last patrol. So we are about to go into a cutscene. Oh, I still need a warrior stone one. And then things get real very, very rapidly from there. So I'm just going to unlock this door. Ominous military music and a cutscene. And who is this? So, this is what the Serinthians waste their resources on. Temples to the stars? How primitive. I find myself doubtful we will see serious resistance from these people. I want extra security posted around the castle. I wouldn't trust these idiots to guard a bale of hay. Well, that's probably a good idea, considering I've just like taken out most of them. <laughs> Understood, my lady. And make sure none of our unwanted guests make an appearance. The Emperor is rapidly losing his patience with this so-called resistance. Frankly, so am I. Emperor Noriskov has sent me here for that very purpose, my lady. They will be destroyed. See that they are. Move out. <sighs> Sometimes I wonder if this place is even worth it. Uh, those soldiers are coming this way. We better hide. Well, that kind of limits our options. Hopefully we can find some way to get to the princess from here. Looks like those Arcadian soldiers are still down there. We better not go back yet. But I will loot this place for everything I'm worth. New item discovered. Battle prowess. Increases damage by 25% and speed by 40 for 3 turns. Very cool. Now, in the original build for this game, the one I beta tested, um, there were not nearly this many healing items. So, um, expert difficulty was very much more challenging than this. And I suggested that they put a few more items in, and uh, they did, and it's a lot better now, I think. This is cool as well. Like When you get to like a point of no return, it asks if you want to save your game. And then after that, it also is like, are you absolutely sure you want to continue? Like, it very much does not let you kind of go past a part that you will regret going past. Stupid king and stupid daughters making me ring bells all day instead of out there fighting baddies. Oi, who are you? Uh, exterminators? Oh, is that so? Well, you look like a couple of baddies to me. Are ya? I've always considered myself something of a baddie. We're exterminators, and we're here taking care of toads. Big ones. How about you get lost and let us work? Now look, I am much of an educated bell ringer, I'll admit. But what kind of exterminators need a pistol and a pair of daggers? They're, uh, really big toads. I don't buy it. I've been itching for a fight. Maybe if I bag me a couple of baddies, they'll let me back in the army. And how much does this boss team slap? I just love it. So I'm just going to shut up and let you listen. Yeah, so each character has a combo attack with two of the other characters in the game. So this will be uh, adding our first one. Every character in the game can unlock a powerful combo ability, each shared with another character. 
When the gauge next to a character's portrait in battle is filled, the combo ability will be unlocked, provided their partner's combo ability gauge is also filled. When you win a battle, a portion of the combo ability gauge will be filled for all party members. And now I will shut up because the music is so, so good. You can see the combo attack is called Rogue Toss. I'm not going to use it yet. Okay, I think it's on repeat now, so I can start talking again. Three Soul Witnesses, how great is that music? Oh, I should have taunted. Ah, oh, well. Shield! And he summons a frog. Get Shigrats from below at this point because uh, he's going to start attacking twice per turn, which is uh, not great. But this is the part where we use Rogue Toss. Uh, Rogue Toss. Rogue Toss. I should have saved a Death Blows for it as well, actually. Lunasis, gotta have good boss music. Yes, you do. Assassin mode. What is this? I love Celtic music too. Yeah, me too. Like, this speaks to me very much. He's doing extra damage, no? I just, I just love that animation. It's so good. You notice well that Sleeping Powder is greyed out for this fight. Um, if you check on the status, he's got a thing called Control Immunity, which most bosses have, and it means they cannot be stunned or silenced. Which I think is quite cool. It kind of means that you, can, you, you can't kind of use that part of your toolkit to cheese it. Close. I'm actually going to heal her just in case he uses um, Pummel. Okay, that's fine.
one that was also very, very close. Are you forgetting that because it's a three turn taunt, he gets two attacks a turn, it kind of uh, it ends up like falling off like halfway through his turn, which is an interesting strategic element. Should have thought I've got that battle prowess item as well. Should have used that. Ouch. And we'll finish it with a combo, because why not? Twenty-one ducats, eighty-one experience, and a warrior stone one, which will allow me to craft the other weapon. Fantastic! <sighs> oh no, you don't! <sighs> I ain't going out that easy. Uh, prepare to die, exterminators! And then we're just going to shift to a completely different character. I love, though, that you hear the bell and you know what's happening because you've just kind of come from that cutscene. But it's it's so subtle because it's like you're not being, like, hit over the head. Well, I was going to say you're not being hit over the head. I think I'm like, what? But um, it's, it's just a sound effect. And for all intents and purposes, it doesn't necessarily mean anything because you've got that context of the fight and the lead up to it, the battle you've just had and like the line afterwards, you kind of know that that bell ringing is because somebody's just been thwacked into it. It's, just, it's a really nice little touch. What in the world was that? Time to wake up, dear. Oh, I've missed Tessa. She's so sassy. Why is there a bell ringer randomly ringing his bell this early? Also, it sounded like somebody just got punched in the head. I don't know, but random or not, his timing was certainly spot on this morning. Time to get up. Ugh. Your wedding is in a matter of hours. Up! Oh, goodness, Ariel, look at you. If you weren't a princess, nobody would want to marry you. Well, I am a princess, and Prince Gage is obligated to marry me, so let me sleep. Oh, very well. You don't have to give me that nightmarish death stare. I'll get up. <laughs> I'll have a report, Jesus, is like the one I, like, cemented shut. That's more like it. Now then, I happen to have an important task for you that needs doing right away. Very well. You're getting married later this morning. You remember that, yes? That hasn't slipped your mind? Yes. I mean, I mean, no. I, I mean, I remember. Good. You're to go into town to pick up your dress from the seamstress. Ugh, isn't that what I have servants for? Isn't that what I have you for? Oh, the Queen has made it very clear that she doesn't wish for her daughter to be some fussy royal tartlet. That's what you have me for. Arcadia is a very different place than Cerinthia, you know. There are warriors there, and they will expect a warrior queen. The first lesson I shall impart upon my new subjects is how to endure disappointment. There's that death stare again. Very well, if it will make you happy, I shall fetch my dress. Good. Take Lord Philip with you when you go. You just told me Arcadia expects a warrior queen, but I'm not even allowed to go into the city unattended. Baby steps, my dear princess. Now off with you. Off with you? I have to get dressed. Well, make it quick. The first thing I'll do when I'm queen is to make a special dungeon for just my servants. <laughs> Ariel's really sassy as well. And now she's all princessy. I love that animation. There we are. And I think that's now 9.06. I've been streaming for run about two hours now. So I think with that being post first boss, that is probably a good place to end it for tonight. So I'm going to save it. And it only remains for me to thank you very much for joining this evening. Um, feel free to give me a like and subscribe if you haven't already. Um, uh, you can find me on the RPG Maker web forums under Trihan. Um, 
if you need to commission any RPG Maker Cody stuff, I do that. Uh, you can find me at my um, Patreon, which I will link in the chat. If you just give me one second. Kind of list what I'm about and what I do and things of that nature. Uh, Lin Linus says, happy to join. It was ha great to have you, man. So, just going to connect the game. So, yeah, thank you so much for uh, being here and joining me on my inaugural Twitch stream. Um, I'm hoping this will become a video on demand. I was recording it, if not, um, though I did kind of miss the, the first little part of that. But either way, I'm sure it'll be available on VOD for people that didn't watch it. Um, so, yeah, same bat time, same bat channel next week, and we will uh, see what Ariel's deal is. So, until then... Um, yeah, thanks very much and goodbye.